Tonight on Dynasty Decisions, we have a couple new quarterbacks coming into play. Are they here to stay? Find out now. Welcome back to Dynasty Decisions, everybody. I'm your host, Michael Bauer. Hopefully week four was good. I'm currently watching the Sunday night game. I have two podcasts to do tomorrow night, so I'm doing this a little bit early. A couple things. One, I just saw Mac Jones drive down the field. Mac Jones is good at football, by the way, which inherently means he's going to be good for your fantasy team. Uh, I'm not telling you to invest, go all in right now. If you can get him um, in a one quarterback league, if you have a guy that's aging out, Ben Roethlisberger, even Aaron Rodgers, a guy like that, Tom Brady, a guy that you know is going to age out of the NFL in a few years. It's always good to have Mac Jones as a backup or a guy that, you know, he's the guy that you just get in there when that guy retires. Or if you feel like your team's not going to make a push, you trade the older guy and you just play the young guy. I've done that a bunch of spots. I've actually started Mac Jones a couple times. Uh, I started a few weeks ago. I wasn't sure if Carson Wentz was going to go with the ankle. So I think it's actually snowing in Foxborough right now, by the way. We're raining really hard. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Typical Massachusetts. Uh, so, yeah, I think Mac Jones is a great guy to have. People worried about the whole dad bod thing. Just the kick and sling it. Also, I saw Jalen Mills do this, and I wanted to throw up. But let's talk about week four in the books. Denver quarterback Teddy Bridgewater left the game versus Baltimore with the concussion. He was immediately ruled out. Drew Locke came in. Look, I was a big Drew Locke guy. I haven't been way too many leagues. <laughs> 12 for 21, 113 yards, no touchdowns and one pick. I really don't feel like it's going to happen for Drew Locke, at least not in Denver. He could be one of those guys that goes somewhere else, gets really good coaching, and turns it around. You never know. Sometimes these guys don't always pan out on their first team. These things happen. That's rain, by the way, not snow. Let's talk about the splits. We're all concerned about Javante Williams, Melvin Gordon. So, Javante Williams, seven carries, 48 yards, no touchdowns, three receptions, 11 yards, no touchdowns. Melvin Gordon, nine carries, 56 yards, no touchdowns, two catches, 11 yards, no touchdowns. So the splits are still equal, but man, Melvin Gordon is not going away quietly, and I knew this was going to be the case. This is the case of temper your expectations. The Denver Broncos, for the first time this season, had to play a team that had a winning record. Their other three opponents were a combined 0-9. They were fool's gold as an undefeated team, as far as I was concerned. They got spanked today. Jimmy Garoppolo exited the game versus Seattle. He has an ankle injury. He's, he's likely out next week as well, which means Trey Lance is going to get the start. This could be a multiple-week thing. So if you have Trey Lance stashed on the end of your bench on a redraft team, you know, you throw him in there dynasty teams he's on your taxi squad he's on your bench play him if grapplo is your guy throw trey lance in there i don't see a problem with it before leaving grapplo is 14 of 23 for 165 one touchdown one pick trey lance comes in 9 for 18 157 yards two touchdowns no picks did carry the ball seven times for 41 yards with no touchdowns so I knew this is going to be a typical trey lance stat line okay i was concerned about accuracy i was not the biggest trey lance fan Big arm. Decision-making was not the best at North Dakota State. I do think Kyle Shanahan was one of the best situations for him to go to, having him as a coach. As we can see with the 50% completion percentage, it's nothing great, 
But I think in time he could definitely work on that. Elijah Mitchell was out again with a shoulder injury. Question, serious question. Did anyone start Alex Collins today? I actually did on a whim. Um, I had somebody ruled out. I can't even remember who it was. It was on an NFL league, so you like have to start a certain amount of running backs. So I'm like, I got Alex Collins in there. I'm going to throw him in. Can you get me three points, please? 10 carries, 44 yards, a touchdown, two catches for 34 yards. So he did a little bit more than that. Might actually win the game because of it. What are we doing with Robbie Anderson? Everyone expected this whole Sam Darnold, Robbie Anderson reunion tour. It's not happening. Five catches for 46 yards on 11 targets. No touchdowns this week. DJ Moore is his guy for sure. I don't know. If I have him in Dynasty, I'm probably getting him off my roster. I'm not at the point where I would drop him in a redraft league yet. I think he's valuable to have on the bench, bye week fill-in, injury fill-in. He's probably better than what you're going to get on the waiver wire. One guy I think you can get, and I didn't check uh, percent roster, but Dalton Schultz, man, this week, six catches for 58 yards and a touchdown. Get more targets than Blake Jarwin. Blake Jarwin was supposed to be a guy. Dalton Schultz is not going anywhere. By the way, Zeke is fine. 20 carries, 143 yards, one touchdown. No receiving work, but when you got that, you don't need it. That's 20 fantasy points right there, bud. Jameson Crowder was active today. He provided a security blanket for Zach Willis. Congratulations to the New York Jets and the New York Giants for their first wins of the season. Hurrah. Eagles couldn't pull it off today. Uh, But Jameson Crowder, seven catches, 61 yards, and one touchdown on nine targets. This is what Jameson Crowder does. That's less than 10 yards a reception, but he's going to be a good PPR guy, point per reception, going to get a touchdown every now and again. Great guy to have stash on your bench if you need him. Um, another guy that I don't anticipate this being a thing, Josh Reynolds. A.J. Brown was out. Julio Jones was out. Ryan Tannehill had to throw somebody. Six catches, 59 yards. When these guys come back, Reynolds, he was inactive the first few weeks. He'll probably get relegated to the bench again, although I like Josh Reynolds a lot. I think he's a guy that can contribute to a team, but obviously Julio Jones and A.J. Brown, much better wide receivers than him. By the way, Daniel Jones is a good fantasy quarterback, not a good real quarterback. 28 of 40, 402 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, four rushes for 27 yards. That is a damn good stat line. I'm not going to do the math. Every league scores quarterbacks different, but you had a good day out of Danny Dimes. By the way, the Danny Dimes nickname, that can just go away. So David Montgomery left the game for the Lions today. He had a knee injury. He's got an MRI scheduled for tomorrow, Monday, or yesterday, depending on when you're watching this. You'll have better information. Again, I'm really busy on Monday, so I couldn't do this then. Um, He was 23 for 106 and two touchdowns before he went out. One of his best games as a pro. Damian Williams is going to be the guy to get if David Montgomery misses time, he also had a decent game. He carries 55 yards, one touchdown, two receptions, 15 yards. Hey, Justin Fields, much, much better today. Still not the Justin Fields that I think we are going to get. I love Justin Fields. The dude can do everything. Remember, when it comes to scouting players, don't scout the helmet because Ohio State quarterbacks traditionally have not had the best success in the NFL. Okay, but Justin Fields, he could do it all. He's going to be just fine. Second game as a starter, 11 and 17, 209 yards, no touchdowns, one pick, only three carries for nine yards. So I do expect his rushing to come up a little bit. The play calling appeared to be much better as, as to the Bears fans that I spoke to on Twitter today. Um, and he did look a lot better. So go, Justin Fields. He might be startable in a week or two. You can't go back now, right? Andy Dalton was rolled out again. I didn't even think about playing Nick Foles from what I could tell. You got to roll with the rookie, especially if you're Matt Nagy. The front office needs to see that you can coach this kid because he's the future. (laughs) You might be gone after the season. So Fields could be the guy there for the rest of the season. Same game, Jamal Williams, still startable. 14 carries, 66 yards, no touchdowns. Outsnap DeAndre Swift. Don't forget, keep an eye on Quintez Cephas. Four catches, 83 yards, no touchdowns. I loved, loved, loved Quintez Cephas coming out of Wisconsin. Six foot one, can block, runs great routes, physical. I love Quintus Cephas. Was hoping the birds would draft him. What are you going to do? J.D. McKissick, also still startable. Seven carries, 15 yards, no touchdown. Don't look at that stat line. You want to look at five catches for 44 yards and one touchdown. You know who else is? 
Taylor Heineke had a friend of mine, Jorge, from Fantasy and Frames. Check them out. Awesome guys. Great content. And I asked him a few weeks ago when Heineke got his first start. I said, hey, is this guy, can I start this guy? Tell me what you think. He's like, is this a joke? I'm like, listen, I need a guy for my second super flex spot. I was able to grab him off waivers before the season started. Figured if Fitz gets hurt, it'd be worth a shot. He's been in there ever since. There's actually circumstances. I've been starting him over Carson Wentz in a one quarterback league. I crap you not. 23 of 33, 290 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Then he ran the ball five times for 43 yards. This guy was a waiver wire ad. You can't complain about this. Here's what. Okay. I want to talk to you guys about something before I finish with the sheet here. I hate when you pick a productive player up off the waiver wire and people laugh at you. I picked up J.D. McKissick last year. Almost won a championship with J.D. McKissick. Taylor Heineke, rolling with him. Zach Pascal, I'm going to talk about him in a minute. I've been throwing him in some lineups too. There was a ton of lineups I had today where they were just so gross. My one league, my two starting wide receivers were Braxton Berrios and Josh Reynolds because (laughs) <laughs> my, my bench looked like a morgue. It was out. It was IR. All my IR is filled up. There's going to be times, but if these guys are getting you points, who cares who it is? Seriously, Taylor Heineke, startable. What are we doing with the Bills' backfield is what I need to know. They split carries. Devin Singletary, higher yards per carry. Seven, 14 carries, 79 yards, no touchdowns. One catch for seven yards. As Zach Moss did have a touchdown. 14 carries, 61 yards, one touchdown. No receptions, though. So this is definitely a running back by committee. And I think it's going to be one of those things where if you're in a pinch and you need a guy for a flex spot, or running back three, depending on how your, your league is set up, these guys are both going to be startable. I mean, the Bills, it's a great offense. They're committed to taking some of that rushing pressure off of uh, Josh Allen, which they should, really. You don't want to see your franchise quarterback get killed. So I guess start them both. That's all I can say. I got Zach Moss, like, everywhere, too. All these startups, I traded for him in a bunch of spots because people didn't want him. Like, man, if this dude smashes and takes over the backfield, I've got a startable running back. So there's going to be times where you can't get who you think the main guy is going to be. Take the other guy. People get hurt. Nobody wanted anybody after Raheem Mostert. In the the 49ers backfield, we've already started Trey Sermon. We've started Elijah Mitchell. Injuries happen. I actually want to talk about something real quick while we're on running backs. Baltimore, what's up with the running backs? Tyson Williams was inactive today. And now you're going to have more information on this by the time you watch this video. I don't know why he was inactive. On the season, 27 carries for 164 yards and one touchdown. He's averaging 6.1 yards per carry. He's got five catches for 45 yards. Now, Baltimore is not really the the type of team that throws to the running back a lot, so I'm not worried about the reception from him. But I was thinking more of a volume, touchdown-dependent guy. To me, a Baltimore running back should not be valued as more than a running back, too, because the receiving volume is not there. But look what they did. Latavius Murray, who I've been saying for two years, Latavius Murray has standalone value, and I've been right. Been right. I started Latavius Murray in a couple spots today, too. 18 carries, 59 yards, and one touchdown, but only a 3.3 yard per carry average. Le'Veon Bell was active over Tyson Williams. Four catches for 11 yards. Now, if you say because Le'Veon Bell is a better receiver, maybe they want to try to go that route, he didn't catch anything. It's 2.8 yards per carry. Devonta Freeman was active over Tyson Williams. He one, ca- one carry for four yards. Devonta Freeman, this guy's still freaking out there. Don't waste fab money on Devonta Freeman, by the way. Don't. Just, just don't. So, I don't know. I'm interested to see what the Ravens do there. For me right now, it looks like it's Latavius Murray's backfield for the time being. He seems to be the guy to start, so... Fire up Lat Murray. Um, by the way, if you started David Mills today, prayers up to you, man. <laughs> 11 of 21, 87 yards, no touchdowns, and four interceptions. One carry for two yards. He's a rookie. I said, I said he was raw. I said that. Got proved today. Rookie mistakes. Four of them. 
So listen, Zach Pascal, I, I mentioned him briefly. Zach Pascal with the filling points, man. Like, I had a roster where my two starting guys were going to be Chase Claypool and I, who is the other one? Darius Slayton were both out. I was like, Walpool, Elijah Moore off the bench. Concussion, he was out. Let me see what's on the waiver wire real quick. Zach Pascal was there. Zach Pascal came through in a full PPR setting with 8.4 points. Four catches for 44 yards. Is it pretty? No. But that could be the difference between winning or losing a game. So listen, get a guy like Zach Pascal in your rosters because these guys, these wide receiver threes, are really, really important to have. This season, especially 17 games. I know it's just one more game, but it's still extra. And you see the injuries that we're having already. It's important to have these guys. It's important to know about these guys. Grab Zach Pascal. And uh, we'll also talk about, go back a little bit to Thursday games. So James Robinson finally got some run, much like Urban Meyer, Saturday night at the club. Go check that out. I'll let you uh, look at that one on your own. 18 carries, 78 yards, two touchdowns. DJ Chark did fracture his ankle, so he's out for the season. By the way, don't be that guy. Oh, F you, DJ Chark. You killed my fantasy team. If DJ Chark doesn't play the whole game and takes a massive dump, okay, I can see calling a player out. He got hurt. Trust me, DJ Chark did not want to fracture his ankle and be ruled out for the rest of the season. I promise you that. So go grab LaVisca Chenault, 6 for 99, no touchdowns but one run for 11 yards. Go get LaVisca. I was always a big LaVisca fan. Thank you, Nate. And Minnesota with the stagnant run game, Dalvin Cook returns for one week absence, nine carries for 34 yards. Alexander Madison didn't do anything either. He actually out-carried Dalvin Cook, 10 for 20. Woof. Ugh. Yuck. By the way, the Giants won today. John Ross caught a 52-yard touchdown pass. I thought, you know, with everything that they have going on, Sterling Shepard's out, Terry Slayton's out. Fire up Colin Johnson. I started him somewhere. <laughs> Nothing. What are you going to do, man? Roll the dice, take your gamble. And as they say here on the channel, go birds. Thank you for watching, everybody. I will be back next week. If I can get my mouse to work, I'll actually bounce out of here now so I can end the broadcast. I'll see you next week, everybody.